It's day 24 of Israel's war on Hamas terror and amidst continuous pounding of Hamas bases uh, at the Gaza Strip, there are growing calls for a pause or a ceasefire. But is Israel willing to consider that? With me is Ambassador Naur Gilon, Israel's ambassador to India. Ambassador, welcome on India First and on India Today on a very uh, difficult phase of this war. But I'd like to understand from you, sir, uh, is Israel willing to consider a pause or a ceasefire in its operations? Well, um, I don't think that there is a, re a reason to pause or to, do, to make a ceasefire now. We uh, decided after the brutal attack on our citizens, uh, invading 30 uh, Jewish, com Jewish communities and killing more than 1,400 uh, people with atrocities of ISIS-like, uh, or Hamas is ISIS today, uh, of really uh, murdering, burning people alive, cutting uh, part body parts, decapitating children, babies, raping, uh, and, and also taking, abducting uh, uh, more than 220, almost 230 probably, the numbers are still not final, of Israelis into Gaza. So, so many war on crimes and we decided that the only way now is to make sure that Hamas is neutralized of its uh, control of Gaza and its abilities to harm Israel again. So this is the operation, there is no reason to cease fire. To have a ceasefire, we are trying also to answer humanitarian needs of the people in order to make sure that suffering is minimal. According to international law, we are trying to advise people to, uh, to leave the main fighting areas in the northern part of Gaza and go south in order uh, to make sure that uh, civilians are not harm, harmed on the way of our actions. It's hard because Hamas is using its population, always have, uh, as human shields. So this is uh, quite a challenge for us because we find ourselves taking care of the, uh, of the civilians of uh, Gaza more than Hamas because Hamas is trying to, for Hamas to have more uh, dead or hit civilians, as many as possible, it serves its purpose because they don't want to fight Israel. They want to... The yeah. clamor ambassador is for more humanitarian assistance, uh, food, fuel, water, medicines to reach uh, the Gaza Strip. The trickle from Rafa is not enough and people are saying that <clears throat> withholding uh, supplies almost amounts to a war crime. Do you agree with that point of view? Totally not. We are making sure that there is enough. there are enough supplies. The problem is that also when we bring supplies into Gaza, then they are, uh, you know, Hamas takes over like they did with the fuel from UNRWA by UNRWA Accords, not uh, reports, not mine. Uh, they go and they steal from the international organizations the, the food, they loot them. It's, it's a big problem, but we are making sure that uh, food and supply will go in uh, at a level that will uh, prevent a humanitarian crisis. This is very, very important also for us as human beings. What, what would victory mean for you in this, in this battle? 24 mm. days of uh, pounding from the air, almost three days of ground operations. Where have you reached and what do you intend to achieve? I think that it's very clear that the cabinet, the prime minister and the cabinet ordered the, the military, I think, two, two main uh, targets to the operation. One of them is to eliminate the ability of Hamas to, to, uh, to control Gaza and to exercise, uh, again, such brutal, vicious attacks against Israeli population. The second one is the release of the hostages. Uh, that we're taking the kidnapped. So these are the two goals, and it will take time. We have we have patience, uh, but we want to achieve it. We cannot afford uh, again uh, ceasefires or any arrangement that is leaving Hamas with any kind of capacity to attack again and to accumulate power. That's what happened in the past, and we will not repeat this mistake. Now, is your aim to completely demilitarize the Gaza Strip? And how do you achieve that aim of getting getting rid of Hamas? Hamas could emerge, the leaders could emerge under some other name and govern Hamas. How do you ensure that, like you said, what happened in the past is not repeated again? So this, this will be the challenge of going in ground operations, both air operations to hit them, to take out the leadership of Hamas, the main players, to take out as much as their 
uh, as their soldiers and their weapons and the capacities as possible. This, this is the challenge. That's what we are doing now. The kind of weapons that you're using now, yeah. the sponge bombs, the penetration bombs, mm -hmm. air-to-ground missiles uh, that are being used, your tanks have already gone in. Do you have a time frame <coughs> when you'll achieve this aim mm -hmm. or will this be indefinite? Because there are fears that Israeli forces could be in Gaza for a very long time. I agree. The time frame is reaching the goals. Whenever we will reach the goals, uh, we will uh, probably stop. But uh, I cannot put a time frame on that. I don't know how much time it will take us. We know what are the goals. They are very clear goals. And we are working to achieve them. In a country like India, which is a victim of, uh, of radical Islamist terror of Rashkar Etai by Jaish e Mohammed, Pakistan state sponsored terror, Ambassador, uh, <coughs> a senior a head honcho of the Hamas, was given a platform, uh, Khalid Mashal, in Kerala. As a victim of terror, how do you look at it as Israel's ambassador to India? I think that, and I saw also in the Hindu, I think there was also an interview with another Hamas leader. I think that this is morally very problematic, very problematic. I mean, uh, it's true uh, that Hamas is, is recognized in more than 40 countries, all the European Union, US, uh, UK and others. Uh, as terror organization in India, it was not, uh, not yet uh, declared as such, although if you go to the tweets of Prime Minister Modiji after the attack and, and afterwards, he, he was very clear about uh, the terroristic uh, nature of Hamas's actions. I think it's morally really problematic to have these people get here a voice, uh, do disinformation and insight. I don't know if you saw what uh, Khaled Mashal spoke about, but he spoke about uh, um, preparing for jihad, ask, calling the, the people there to go to the streets and the squares in order to uh, put pressure, to, to protest and put pressure on the governments. And he called for financing of the terror organization, of the resistance, as he called it. So when you look at it, this incitement, I think it's, it's really bad. Why does anyone want to give this brutal terror, ISIS-like organization the voice on a, you know, and to speak to Indian people, to uh, spread their hate, I, I think it's a huge mistake. Why do you think it's happening? What's your assessment? No, I, I cannot say why it's happening. I think that people, are, you know, whoever saw what happened on October 7th, the brutality, the videos that came out, the pictures, and is still speaking to Hamas as if they are a legitimate organization, I think this is already a huge, huge problem. They should be delegitimized. Does anyone want to go and wanted in the past to go and speak to Osama bin Laden to understand his views or why he was doing the atrocities, why he brought down the Twin Towers? It's, it's terrible. It's terrible that anyone about after raping and cutting, you know, beheading babies and, and torturing people, that you can still speak to them and give them, a, give them the microphone to speak to anyone. Is the world divided and is this a cause for concern in Israel's war against Hamas uh, for the simple reason that many consider what happened uh, on the 7th of October on one side, they're saying, yes, even if that was wrong, what Israel is doing with babies dying in Gaza Strip <coughs> and with women dying in, at the Gaza Strip, uh, two wrongs don't make a right, Ambassador. So I think that it's really, it's so awkward, so unright, so to compare uh, a brutal attack in, in the morning of a Jewish holiday on Saturday in the homes of people when they were sleeping in beds, go and brutally, uh, it's not only killing, it's also torturing, it's also many, many other things. You do that and you compare it to the Israel Defense Forces who are coming to neutralize the threat of Hamas, uh, when Hamas, for years, is shooting out of hospitals and civilian places and schools because they know they cannot compete with Israel. They are chicken. They will go to civilian uh, places where they are not protected and butcher them. But when IDF wants to come in and take an action, they want to hide by, take out the victim card. So immediately they come out with a victim card. Uh, we do the utmost to prevent hurt of population and do, they do the utmost to have their population hit. 
And you see what happened even with the misfired rocket, by the way, that went to the hospital. And after five minutes, they already say that it was an Israeli attack and 471 bodies were counted in five, ten minutes. I mean, it was fake news, totally fake news. Uh, 20% of their rockets, they shot at Israel so far more than 8,000 rockets. So calculate, more than 150 rockets fell inside on their own population inside Gaza, mis misfired. So, you know, the situation is very complex. We are the ones that are making the maximum to protect the, the civilian population in Gaza. Again, we ask them to evacuate. Hamas is threatening them not to leave. They work under the hospitals. Shifa hospital is known. We took out also a video about it that under the Shifa hospital, they are, they are operating, they are taking the electricity of the hospital, they are taking the water of the hospital, all the facilities, and they are working under that, because they know that we are human enough uh, to be thinking 50 times before we attack the hospital. And this is the issue, and they refuse, they, they, they threaten the people, don't leave, don't leave the area, we need you as human shields. And this is the main problem, you know, you are not working with uh, another democratic nation like Israel, you are working with an ISIS... Hamas terror organization. So will your ground forces have to go inside tunnels and does that mean more losses of life for you? Uh, in, or, or will, beyond a point, you will start bombing the hospitals and the schools and the mosques underneath which you say are Hamas uh, strongholds and how uh, the command and control centers and ammunition dumps? We will work according to international law and do whatever we need in order to get Hamas uh, neutralized. As we said, of course, they are all hiding underground and letting the population protect them from above. I don't know uh, tactics, if we go into tunnels or we have other means, we will find the right means. Tunnels will not be a safe haven for them. We will go after them wherever they are. Uh, also, n people who are leadership who is not in Gaza, they, I would advise them really to look over their back every day because we are not going to, anyone connected to what happened is going to pay a price sooner or later. Even if they're in Qatar, if they're, if they're in their safe havens or five stars, as, as Israel puts it, they're safe in five stars in Qatar. Even the leaders that are sitting in different places, especially in Qatar, but not only in a very luxurious life and letting their, their uh, people in Gaza, and they're rich, very rich people by their own, I mean, they accumulated money through Hamas and their organization. No one no one should sleep well at night. We will get to all of them, one way or another. We know exactly who are the people behind it. And of course, the big, uh, the big uh, octopus that is sending his arm is Iran. So if we look at it, Iran is the main instigator of whatever we see. Because it's not, uh, Iran, uh, Iran was arming, training, uh, equipping Hamas for, uh, uh, and financing Hamas for, for years. And that was known. But uh, you see that, look, who is now trying to threaten and, and, and deter Israel from action? Iran itself, by talks and threats. Hezbollah, which is another arm of this octopus, Iran. The Houthis in Yemen that are known proxies are, of Iran are shooting, trying to shoot at Israel, intercepted by the Americans and by us. Uh, from Syria, also, Shiite uh, groups. So the Iranians are the ones masterminding all of that, uh, and one has to remember what is the head of the, head of the octopus or the snake in this case, and we we will find a way for having everyone pay their dues when it comes to it. But can you fight on multiple fronts? I mean, the fact that you mm. mentioned all the fronts where you're already fighting Hezbollah in the north, Hamas in the south, the Houthi rebels, uh, you know, they've been firing rockets at you, um, IRG, uh, American forces have been targeted both in Syria and Iraq. Uh, so is this, is this war going to expand and not remain <coughs> restricted just to your war on Hamas? We are not going to expand the war. We already have a, a war with uh, Iran by proxy. Hamas and Hezbollah. Hezbollah is in war with Israel, low intensity for the time being. They are shooting in the border every day, trying to shoot, trying to bring down, to kill soldiers, uh, civilian population, every day. Uh, we are not trying to bring it to high intensity full war. We hope not to. We send messages. If we will need, we will find the two fronts. Look, it, Israel has no alternative. It's the question of survivability. If we are not the uh, strong actor who can protect himself in the region, we will be in deep trouble. But this is not only our war. Think of it that if the jihadists now, 
the ISIS-like organizations. They feel that Hamas has won, and for the time being, the picture of victory is in the hands of Hamas after the massacre of October 7, in their eyes, in their sick eyes, I should say. If we don't reverse the picture into the feet, strong defeat of Hamas, it can fuel extreme elements that are still there of ISIS, of Islamic State, that were weakened by Americans and other forces that are dispersed, but the ideas are still there. And we can see them fueling in the middle, in, in West Asia, in Europe, in South Asia, there are still elements that are ISIS-oriented. This is the fear. I mean, it's much bigger than just the war against Hamas. It's the message, and that's why the Americans this time, I think, understood that very early and sent their fleet in order to threaten uh, any forces, Iran, Hezbollah mainly, from enlarging the scope of the war here. And I think this is very important. It's a bigger war than just Israel-Hamas. But the problems, you know, you say that uh, Hamas leadership should keep looking over their shoulder. Uh, their days are numbered. What's actually happening on ground is that, uh, you know, people of Jewish origin, they are in the line of fire. You saw what happened at Dagestan. How do you look at that? How do you look at what's happening in American universities? But I'll come to American universities in just a moment. Uh, do tell me, how do you look at the attacks, the attack that took place at that international airport in Dagestan? I think that it's the responsibility of every country to take care of uh, other, other visiting tourists or its own Jewish population. And I... Uh, the Russians have to do it there, and the Americans have to do it in their own places. Each one has to take care of it. Anti-Semitism is not a new disease in the world. Uh, they're just looking for times to erupt. It's there. It was always there. It will come back. It's back already. Uh, we have to accept it. Uh, we have to fight it. We have to understand it, not accept it, but understand it and fight it. And that's what we have to do, and different countries around the world have to do. Uh, it's unacceptable that in uh, democratic Western societies, the freedom of speech enables you to have hate speech against others. This is unacceptable, and I think that people understand that. And you see a very tough uh, approach of in the UK, uh, of people saying they will arrest in France, in, in the United States. I think that this is very, very important. It's not our problem. It's partly our problem. It's their problem. If you allow extremism and hatred in your society, it will come to bite you back. It, it already bites your own Jewish citizens of Jewish origin, but it will come to bite you back because the hatred, once you let it go up, it, it's not controlled anymore. The narrative war, uh, you know, you, you mentioned about the hospital. They mentioned 500 dead and Israel targeted the hospital and the world, at least a section of it, went with it. Are are they winning that narrative war against you? Is that what is happening? <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, you know, we are one Jewish country in the world. Uh, all in all, we are less than 10 million people. They are in the world, there are less than 15, 15 million Jews in the world. How many Muslim countries, how many Muslim around the world, and how many supporters they have? So what happened here, the narrative is decided much before. The narrative was there, people were shocked on what happened on October 7th. So anyone was, who was half this decent uh, took out a strong condemnations without but and if. So speaking, condemning what happened on October 7th, because this cannot be, such atrocities and such behavior cannot be justified uh, or put in context. I also said on Twitter and other places, those who did not were not decent enough to come and uh, condemn October 7th cannot come now and speak about atrocities or suffering on the other side. The suffering today in Gaza that we have to be concerned about are 230 almost Israelis kidnapped there, children from nine months old to uh, people in their 80s. Uh, this is the suffering that should, people should care about. And this, what happened in the world that though, all those who hate Israel to start with or have an agenda, they just wanted in the hospital, they tried to turn the hospital into that point. Eventually it was a it was understood that it was a lie of Hamas, but it doesn't matter. They were just looking for the excuse to explain why they dislike Israel. So after October 7, it was a little bit not politically correct, convenient, after these horrendous pictures, to come and hate Israel. But now it's legitimate because Israel is doing the same, and, you know, trying to equate. This is part of this uh, approach, terrible approach, but we know that it, it's always like that. The only tool that they have to protect 
the terrorists is under, behind, under the people, or accumulating bodies above them of civilians, claiming civilians, in order to put international pressure on Israel to stop. They don't want to fight us. They want to sting us, and this was a terrible sting, yeah. and run back to their holes. We will not let them this time. In the past, maybe it worked. In the past, we looked for, for finding a solution, a ceasefire, to weaken them and then ceasefire. No, now we are going to eliminate their capacity as much as we can, and it's not going to be the same. It's not the same event. Am I to understand, Ambassador, in case the hostages were returned, the bombing would stop? Or will, you, will Israel continue to decimate Hamas and your war on terror continues till Hamas is no longer an entity to govern or remain in Gaza and that area is demilitarized? There are two separate issues. The hostages, it's a violation of every law, human law and international law. They should be brought back regardless of anything else. This is an issue by itself. Finishing Hamas' ability to re-enact such actions is a separate thing. So I don't see them as connected. We need the hostages back yesterday, not today, yesterday. They are already more than three weeks there. People are sick. Uh, medications they need. Babies who need food and feeding. This has to stop now. Our need to, uh, for the world, not only for Israel, to make sure that the jihadists in the world, they don't win. They don't have the feeling that there is now a resurgence of the power, of their energy, of the motivation. That's what we have to do. It's a bigger war. And if people don't understand that, that, that we are fighting in a way a much bigger war, they, they, they are missing a big part of the picture. So you already see this as a world war against <clears throat> terror? No, it's not a world war against terror. You can see the division in the world. You referred to that before. There is a clear dif division in the world now. Uh, that uh, the mo democratic countries are supporting Israel, they understand the need. Some other countries uh, are less. You can see that uh, in, in our region, the two countries that are leading are Turkey and uh, Qatar. And you can see that uh, the Iranians, of course, are, as I said, at the head. And, and China, both China and Russia are less, uh, more supportive of the other side. Unfortunately, they did not go in a strong condemnation of October 7th. And this is a real pity. It's not about a world war. Now it's a war against extremism. We are fighting Hamas now. We have to win this battle. Uh, I don't think that other countries will join. No one has appetite. It's, you know, there are too many wars in the world today. This is a war that we will fight with our own power. But we need the legitimacy of the world to do this war and to finish Hamas. That's the bottom line. To finish, Hamas remains the bottom line. Ambassador, for joining me here on India Today. Thank Many you. thanks. Thank Wish you all the much. best in your war on terror. Thank you. So this was Israel's ambassador to India, Ambassador Nour Gilon, insisting war on terror on Hamas will continue till the time Hamas is decimated. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.